Down in Brazil today, thousands of supporters of President Jair Bolsonaro took to the streets. These are Independence Day celebrations to support Bolsonaro, a conservative. He's been feuding with Brazil's Supreme Court, which has had its fair share of problems as well. But you see what's happening here? The left-wing media now pushing their insurrection narrative on a global scale. Take a look at these headlines. First from The Guardian, quote, Brazil warning Bolsonaro may be planning military coup amid rallies. Former world leaders and public figures say nationwide marches are modeled on U.S. Capitol insurrection. Here's another one from the Business Insider. Bolsonaro is stoking a Capitol riot style insurrection in Brazil that could happen as early as Tuesday. That's today. Hasn't happened yet. Meanwhile, the Capitol breach fallout continues. A group of House Republicans send a letter to our telecom companies, 13 of them, including Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. These lawmakers are threatening to pursue what they consider all legal remedies if these companies comply with Nancy Pelosi's subpoena for their records. The House Select Committee investigating January 6th requesting companies provide phone records of Trump-aligned lawmakers and members of the Trump family as well. This would be a you know, violation of privacy, a lot of people would say. And let's welcome in now senior contributor to American Greatness, Julie Kelly. Julie, great to see you. Hey, John, thanks for having me on. So great to have you. A lot going on here. First, I want to focus on these phone records that Nancy Pelosi uh, is pushing for here. You know, at first you think, you know, this comes out right around the same time uh, things were just getting as bad as they could get in Afghanistan. You thought maybe Nancy Pelosi was just trying to change the narrative, but she's serious about this, right? She wants to gain access uh, to the phone records from not just President Trump's allies in Congress, but private citizens, his own family members. What's going on here? Well, look, John, you have two things happening at the same time, as you know, because you've covered uh, the prosecution of now more than 600 Americans who were involved in the Capitol breach uh, and the protest on January 6th. Um, and now you have the political side of it, which is Nancy Pelosi's special committee into January 6th. And so um, this is really all the Democrats are going to have to run on next year, John, as you know. Nancy Pelosi has a slim to none chance of holding the House next year, uh, not just because of all the political catastrophes surrounding the Democrats and Joe Biden's White House, but simply math, because uh, in redistricting, the red states are picking up congressional seats, blue states are losing them. And so that is the political agenda of her committee. Um, but let's not forget, and I'm glad that House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is finally speaking out about these companies working with the government or potentially working with the government to get private uh, information, because that's exactly what federal prosecutors have been doing in this Capitol breach probe for now the past eight months. You have Google, Verizon, Facebook working hand in hand with Joe Biden's Justice Department to collect personal information, scrub deleted social media accounts, to use that information in court documents to prosecute Americans, mostly for trespassing, and in some cases to use mean memes about Joe Biden right. or Nancy Pelosi in sentencing uh, memorandum. So this is something that's been going on for eight months. I guess when you target Republican lawmakers, then it becomes an outrage. But this is exactly what's been happening to average Americans, hundreds of them, under this Justice Department since January 6th. And what you can really see here, it, it, whether it's a, a direct, you know, it's, it's something they're intending to do or not, there is a chilling effect on the First Amendment, you know, our ability to assemble in certain places. And Julie, you can see what they're doing now, too, with what's happening in Brazil. I saw the coverage of this yesterday. You have world leaders uh, worried about a, quote, insurrection in Brazil. You know, we never had an insurrection here in this country. Uh, legally speaking, right. right? You know, we can take a look at this, but they st they keep stoking this same narrative that any conservative who's standing up for freedom is somehow also standing up for coups and insurrections. And specifically on the insurrection claim, you know, we have the so-called QAnon shaman. I'm using a lot of air quotes here, Julie, uh, but he's now pleading guilty. Uh, he has become the poster child of this entire incident. And you know, when anytime you see a headline from the corporate press that says insurrection, you usually see a picture of Jacob there. But if he's not facing insurrection or sedition charges, how can they continue with this narrative that an insurrection or a coup took place? I'm glad you asked that, John, and I'm glad that you brought, brought up Jacob Chansley. Um, this is a man who turned himself in the day after. He's been held in jail under pretrial 
detention orders, like dozens of January 6th protesters. Um, he obviously has mental health issues. A judge ordered a mental a psychology, a psychology uh, evaluation of him in May. Um, but he remains behind bars. Like, he is a hardened criminal. He's not charged with any violent offense. So finally, in order to get out of jail, he just pleaded guilty to obstruction of an official proceeding, which is a felony. About 200 Americans now face this felony. This is what the Justice Department is adding to misdemeanor cases to turn these people yep. into convicted felons. He remains behind bars. My question, John, are we going to ship people like furry uh, QAnon shamans and Indiana grandmothers to Brazil now to help boost their insurrection <laughs> narrative i mean I it mean, certainly even, worked here so i don't know why they wouldn't take it global at a time i would say that's ridiculous but who knows these days and you know what, what, what we're really seeing here julie is like the industrial nature of our you know so of our criminal justice system and you know what's happening to jacob chansley happens to millions of americans is they are put in a position where they don't really have an out to pursue a due process here and they feel like they have to plead to something just to change their surroundings uh and I know we'll see more of it, but Julie, uh, I mentioned again this chilling effect on the First Amendment, our right to uh, assemble peacefully and uh, address gr our grievances with the government. Um, the Epic Times is reporting on a rally that's uh, due to take place uh, in support of these pl uh, political prisoners, as they're being called, and you say the FBI is trying to stop this rally. Uh, what's going on here? Well, that's what it looks like. This is a rally held by an organization and a man who has already held several rallies, not just in D.C., but in other cities in support of these political prisoners trying to get attention. And so there's a big rally planned on September 18th. And now you see the FBI and the news media um, and even people like General Honore, who allegedly did this security uh, assessment into the Capitol, appointed by Nancy Pelosi to do so, saying that this rally is a threat. It's a second attempt at insurrection. It's on a Saturday. I don't even think Congress is in session. Hmm. Um, and so this has been, this is the long-term objective of January 6th, to take this four-hour disturbance, to use it to criminalize political dissent, to silence criticism against this president and this administration and the Democratic Party, and to weaponize powerful government agencies like our Justice Department, our, our national intelligence apparatus, even the Defense Department against uh, domestic violent extremists, which is, you know, uh, John, is code for Trump supporters. Right. So they are trying to use this now to shut down any political rallies in our nation in our nation's capital. Um, and it's really outrageous. I would love to see Kevin McCarthy speak out of, of, about this as well. Yeah, Kevin McCarthy a little slow to the uh, what's going on here, slow on the pickup, but he has, you know, kind of tuned into what's going on. We should have known from the very beginning that Nancy Pelosi and her partisan committee uh, with, you know, Liz Cheney, as uh, the, the vice chairman now sitting there from her position, this is an anti-Trump committee. It's against Trump supporters, and it's going to infringe on our First Amendment rights. Julie, Kelly, great to see you, and great reporting as always over there at American Greatness. John, thanks so much for having me on and covering this. I appreciate it. Anytime. And it is our responsibility to shine a light on what's going on here. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.